Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights. The bad audio is back. Because my, my new microphone that I bought in September has broken already. Because technology hates me. Luckily, I have a warranty on it, so there's another one coming, but... Uh, I won't get here till Friday, so... Gotta record this with the, uh, the internal mic on my camera. Which is... <sighs> Is not the worst, but I don't know. It takes some finagling to get it to sound decent. It, it, even then, it's it sounds bad no matter what. But I, I, it takes a lot of work to make it sound acceptable. So, apologies for the bad audio. Blame, blame, f f f f fine. Creators of my knockoff Yeti. Anyways, last time it was a Thanksgiving horror triple feature. Um, because I'm pretty sure there are more Thanksgiving horror movies than there are Thanksgiving not horror movies. Because... Because these three aren't even the only three. Blood Rage, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving 3. And then there's also two more. Uh, Home Sweet Home and Madman, but I, I already have another movie I want to pair Madman up with, so probably we'll watch that next Thanksgiving. That's five Thanksgiving horror movies as compared to Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, uh, Spider-Man, the F Sam Raimi's Spider-Man is a Thanksgiving movie. Probably some, like, Hallmark movie set on Thanksgiving. Much like Slashers, uh, there's a fucking Hallmark movie for every holiday. Every holiday has a Slasher and a Hallmark movie. I did a whole thread of it on my Twitter. Um, that's it. That's all the Thanksgiving movies I can think of. Maybe Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, if you want to count that as a movie, but it's... It's a TV special, you know, that doesn't count. You can't count a TV special as a movie. I, I, yeah, I think there's more Thanksgiving horror than Thanksgiving not horror. There's also the fake trailer for uh, Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Which, I'm not, not gonna lie, looks kind of good, but also Eli Roth, so... Eh. Anyways, we started with Blood Rage. Um... Classic horror, uh, classic slasher film. I say classic, uh, not well received in its time. It's sort of grown an audience since its release, just for being really weird and and having really good effects. Uh, the the uh, effects guy on this went on to do a lot of other high profile work. Although offhand, I don't know exactly what he did. His name is Ed French, did the effects for this, and he worked on Terminator 2, and uh, some Star Trek movies, <laughs> Hellraiser Bloodline, and prior to this, he had worked on uh, Sleepaway Camp, Chud, and The Stuff, so, you know. Big name in the industry. Kind of, I guess. He did good work in this, I'll give him credit. This The, the effect's really good in this. I really like the effects in this. Very good deaths in this movie. Blood Rage is a film that was shot in 1983 as uh, Horror of Shadow Woods. Which doesn't really make sense. It's not like a, a forest slasher movie. There, There is a forest, but it's like out behind this house. Can you hear that sound? That sound just happens. I don't know what it is. I think it's my fridge. It takes place in an apartment complex called Shadow Woods. So, not the best title. Uh, but after it was made in 83, it kind of sat on a shelf for a few years. 
wasn't released till 87, at which point it was released, I believe, to theaters as Blood Rage, and then onto video as Slasher, but I might have that backwards. It might have been to theaters as Slasher, and then to VHS as Blood Rage. Uh, it's, it's the story of these twin brothers, uh, back, back when they were little kids. They're, they're little kids at this drive-in theater, and one of them takes an axe and, like, murders a lady and, and, and her boyfriend. Uh, no, hmm, he murders the boyfriend, and then the girl runs away naked. I remember that specifically happening. He murders the boyfriend, and then he, like, hands the axe to his brother and smears blood on his brother's face, and it's like, oh, it was him, it was my brother who did it. Keep in mind, they're, like, six years old. Like, little, little kids. It's like, oh, it was my brother, he did it. And so then the film is 20 years later, um, the brother is just getting out of a psychiatric ward, uh, it's Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, he's, he's out of the psychiatric ward, um, he escapes, actually. He, he escapes from the psychiatric ward. Um, and his brother starts killing people to make it look like it was the, the other brother, the brother that's been in, in the institution the whole time. Because so they're, they're twins, and it's the whole, ooh, which tr is this the creepy twin or the, the good twin? But, you know, uh, the the... The twin that hasn't been in the institution is actually the evil twin, and the, the one who was in the institution is the good twin. Um, and then at the end, the, the shocking twist is that he was just trying to get rid of his brother because he and his mom have a, a sexual relationship. That's the plot twist. That's the plot twist. It's an incest movie. This is the third fucking incest movie I've shown at my movie nights. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a very well-paced slasher movie with a lot of good kills in it. Like, uh... Slasher movies... tend to kind of bore me, honestly. Like, you have, like, the good ones up at the top, like Halloween and, and Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, good stuff. But then there's a lot where, like, it's really bad and boring. Because, like, there'll, there'll be, like, a kill at the beginning of the movie, and then an hour goes by, and then the killer starts killing again. And I just don't like seeing those types of slasher movies. So, uh... Blood Rage, well-paced. Uh, thumbs up from me. That, that's the thing, too, with slasher movies, because there's, like, there's, like, the popular ones that are, like, good, you know, Halloween and all them, and then, like, there's this area where they're kind of well-known, but not super well-known, and those all kind of suck. But then you get into, like, the really obscure slasher movies, like Blood Rage or Blood Harvest, um, and it, they're actually, like, really fun and enjoyable. I don't know. I like obscure slashers better than, like, moderately known slashers. A statement I'm going to contradict with one of tonight's picks, but... Eh, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, a lot of people, when they talk about Blood Rage, bring up Sam... No, shoot. Uh, Ted Raimi being in it. Sam Raimi's brother. Um... Because this is technically the first movie Ted Raimi was in that wasn't directed by his own brother. Um, <laughs> even though this was the first film he appeared in, and then he was in like two or three other movies before this film ever got released. But uh, what had happened is he had like moved out on his own to be an actor. Um, and, and his dad didn't want him to become an actor, and he's like, okay, if, if you get a role within your first year on your own, you can go off and be an actor, but if not, you come back to 
I think they're from Indiana. I forget where they're from. But you, you come back home and, you know, work whatever industry we have here. So the year is, like, almost up. He's, like, days away from the end of his first year, and he gets picked up for this role in Blood Rage. It's one shot. He doesn't even have a line. He's, he's a condom salesman in one shot at the beginning of the movie. But that's Ted Raimi's first role. It's why Ted Raimi got to be an actor. I feel like he'd be an actor anyways. His brother is Sam Raimi. And Sam Raimi went on to make a lot of really popular stuff. I mean, Evil Dead was popular. Um, especially by the time this came out. But by the time they were making this, Evil Dead was moderately popular. It took a little while to catch on. Um, this came out the same year as Evil Dead 2, so by the time this was out, Evil Dead was very popular. And then, you know, he did Xena and Hercules, and then he did the Spider-Man movies. So, yeah, yeah, Sam Raimi's become pretty popular, I'd say. This does have a, a very nice scene of a male in the shower uh, subverting the usual horror trope of women getting in the shower. And it is filmed pretty much exactly like it would be if it were a woman, which is kind of weird. <laughs> um, but it's the killer. It's not even... He's not... Because usually you show someone in the shower because the shower is like a very... It's an unsafe place to be. You know, it's like this tiny, confined space where you're naked. You are absolutely defenseless. Um... So uh, you, you put people in the shower to, like, it's an uncomfortable place to be. It's an easy place to get murdered. And also to get tits in your movie. Let's be real. It's to get tits in your movie. But it's a good place to kill someone. And it's just the killer getting in the shower. Weird scene. There's a scene of a woman who, like... Because he's, he's cutting people up with a machete, right? He's got the machete on the cover, you know? He cuts this woman, like, clean in half. Which I don't think you could do with a machete. Like, one swipe. Top half goes one direction. Bottom half goes the other. But then the woman is, like, still alive and screaming without the bottom half of her body. Which is... Kind of funny, actually. It's a really funny scene. Reminds me a bit of, um, X-Giant, Wrath of Paul Bunyan. That's a throwback. <laughs> Shout out to the people who've been watching since Paul Bunyan. It's a good movie. I should, I should bring back Paul, uh, X-Giant, Wrath of Paul Bunyan. It's on Amazon Prime now. When I made that video, it, like, wasn't available anywhere. And now it's just on Prime. I think I had something to do with that. Because I asked them to put it on Prime. I'm like, hey, can we get a release of this movie, please? Though the woman who gets cut in half is actually the producer of the film. Because the actress who was supposed to play that woman didn't show up. So they're like, well, we're supposed to film the scene and the actress isn't here. Uh, you're a woman on set. You play her. So she she played that she she played that character just because the actress didn't show up. She almost had to direct the film. Apparently, the the director of the film threatened to leave production. So uh, hold on, is this directed by John Grismer? John Grismer directed this. I don't know what else he's done. Uh, but he threatened to leave set, and he's like, "No, nah, I'm not doing it. You're gonna have to direct this." And the producer's like, I am not prepared to direct this movie. So she she, she talked him into staying on the film. <laughs> Stars Louise Lasser, who was like a pretty prominent actress. She's been in a lot of TV um, and a couple of movies. What has she been in, actually? I, I know I looked her up and I can't remember any other things she was in. She... Oh, Requiem for a Dream, that's what I remember it from. Also, Mystery Men, she's in Mystery Men. <laughs> and, uh, 
and Sam Raimi's Crime Wave, one of his most underrated films. Perhaps due to, uh, you know, her meeting Ted Raimi on the set of this film. Yeah, so a uh, fairly popular actress that they got to be in this movie. And she's really the only one. Well, I mean, and Ted Raimi, but he wasn't popular when this came out. <laughs> um, oh, the, the rest of the cast doesn't do bad. Even, like, uh, the main guy, he's playing twins, and it's he does a pretty decent job of playing twins. I don't know. Decent movie. There's... Fuck, I almost forgot. There's one guy in this movie. Because I was watching... The, the first time I watched this was last Thanksgiving. Uh... You know, when the primaries were going on. I'll put a picture of him right here. This guy in the movie who looks just like Pete Buttigieg. Swear to God. I'm, I'm watching this movie and I'm like, that's fucking Pete Buttigieg. And he gets his head cut off. I, there's, there's probably a joke in there, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't dislike Pete Buttigieg that much. I mean, it'd be different if, like, he had won the primary... I might make a crack at him if he had won the primary, um, but but he didn't, so it's like, who cares? Blood Rage, it's a fun slasher movie. Weird, weird shit. Fun, lots of good kills. You want a good underrated slasher? Blood Rage, I like it. Next we watched Thanks Killing. Uh, a movie about a, a killer turkey. It was like a uh, Native American magic. This Native American mystic created the turkey to protect Native American land from the, the colonialists. Um, and he, he gets resurrected every 500 years. And it's been 500 years since he was last seen. And wouldn't you know it, these kids are like going camping for Thanksgiving. Just a weird thing to do for Thanksgiving. Um, and in fact, like, like, they all get together as if they're gonna like go out camping right then. But then they all just like go home. And then the next day, they're like, hey, let's go camping. But yeah, and then they, they get killed off by the turkey, and they have to, like, find a way to uh, defeat the turkey. Um, use, using, like, they, they have to say, like, a secret, sacred spell backwards, and, and then the turkey will be mortal, and they can finally kill it. I don't know. Pretty, uh... Pretty standard stuff for a horror movie. There's, it's clearly very tongue-in-cheek about the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's a movie about a killer turkey called Thanks Killing. You, you gotta be a little tongue-in-cheek about it. Um, and it's not... It's not the worst thing, actually. Like, I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a couple laughs out of this film. There's, there's some jokes that land. There's a there's a point early in the movie where like the kids are driving home and one of them's like answering a call from their dad, and another one's just like, "Hey, pass me a beer," and the dad's like, "What did he just say? You know, passing things in a car is illegal." Like, that's good. That's funny. That made me laugh. There's this sort of running gag where the turkey will like disguise himself as a human. And no one will notice. They like everyone would be like, "Oh yeah, it's a human," even though it's like obviously the turkey. Except at one point early in the film, he's like hitchhiking, and he gets in the car with this dude, and the the dude he's not wearing a disguise at all, and the dude just like doesn't react to the fact that he's a talking turkey. Just like, ah, oh, yeah, this is this is. Perfectly acceptable. Just a turkey getting in my fucking car. I'm okay with this. The turkey in uh, Thanks Killing reminds me. <laughs> he, he reminds me of the the Rick and Morty character Scary Terry, 
who's like a parody of Freddy Krueger, but all he does is say bitch over and over. Bitch, bitch, you fucking bitch, bitch. Because the turkey says bitch like a lot. Like his first lines on screen are nice tits, bitch. Uh, in Blood Rage, there's this recurring joke uh, early on. Terry, uh, Terry being the killer, Terry, like, kills someone, and then he's, like, licking the blood off the machete, and he's like, haha, that's not cranberry sauce, and it's funny, because it's Thanksgiving, and then he says it, like, four more times in the movie, it's like, we get it, Terry, we get it, we, we get that it's, it's not cranberry sauce, hilarious, great joke, and then, and then I start up Thanks Killing. So me, me and my friend were, like, laughing at it, like, how many times is he gonna make this fucking cranberry joke? And then we start thanks killing, and in the first, like, 20 minutes, there's a cranberry sauce joke. And we're like... God. I, I, I say there are jokes I laughed at. There are also definitely lots of jokes... I didn't laugh at. I'm not going to act like Thanks Killing is a good movie, but it's kind of fun. Like it's it's not the worst thing. You know, I don't regret showing it. It's it's worth a few laughs and it's like an hour long. So I'm like, okay. You want to have a Thanks Thanksgiving horror movie night? Yeah, Thanks Killing, whatever. Throw it in there. It's it's not hard to watch. It's a very short sit. A couple decent jokes. Why not? Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I have that much more to say about Thanks Killing. Like, there's, there's not that much to it. It's a, it's a comedy horror film about a, a, a turkey that kills people. It's kind of funny. Worth a laugh or two. Not the greatest thing I've ever seen. So, then we watched Thanks Killing 3, because there is not a Thanks Killing 2. It's kind of the central plot of Thanks Killing 3. Like, they made Thanks Killing 2, and it was considered, like, one of the worst movies ever made. And so, like, every copy of it has been destroyed. Except one. There's one copy of Thanks Killing 3 left. Or Thanks Killing 2 left. And Turkey is now on the hunt for the one remaining copy of Thanks Killing 2. Uh. That's one of, like, the seven plots in this movie. Here's, here's the thing I drink while I watch these movies. And lately I've been thinking, like, ah, maybe I should drink a little less while I'm watching these movies. Because I do talk about them on camera. And sometimes I don't do a great job explaining these movies because I was kind of drunk while I was watching them. I could have been stone cold sober watching Thanks Killing 3. And I still don't think I could explain any of what's going on. Like, like I, I went into this prepared for it to be kind of scared of it being like a, a Ginger Dead Man 2 or Ginger Dead Man 3 situation uh, where it's just like shitty jokes and and not trying very hard because, you know... Thanks Killing kind of fits in with, like, those Full Moon movies. Because, like, Full Moon, they got the puppets, and they got, like, the pun title, and they got, like, the crude humor. So, given how similar Thanks Killing is to, like, a lot of Full Moon movies, I was prepared for Thanks Killing 3 to sort of be this, like, Full Moon sequel type thing, like Ginger Dead Man 3. Where it was just, like, throwing shit at the wall and none of it was funny and they didn't try very hard. What I was not prepared for was Thanks Killing 3 trying too hard. Like, this movie tries way too hard. 
There is so much shit in this movie. It's like, Thanks Killing is this really straightforward slasher movie. Like, very straightforward slasher parody, you know, jokes about, like, a turkey doing things that a normal slasher villain would do. The sequel... First off, it's it's not a horror movie. Like, basically no one dies. Like, all, almost no one dies in this movie. It's not a slasher, that's for sure. Um... It's like, like Turkey's looking for the last remaining copy of Thanks Killing 2. And it gets picked up by this, like, Muppet girl um, who, who has lost her mind. And she's trying to find her mind. And that's really the main plot, is her trying to find her mind. And she ends up at this guy's house and he's trying to start this, like, Thanksgiving theme park, and then there's like a a robot and a a worm from space because Thanks Killing Two it was Thanks Killing Two in space, so they've come in from space to like stop Turkey from getting Thanks Killing Two. The reason he wants it is the movie's cursed. Like if you watch the movie, you'll like. Be cursed. I they they don't really elaborate on the curse. I think like Turkey will mind control them, but maybe he'll just kill them. I don't know. Thanks killing two is cursed. That's that's the plot. And there there's like shit in there about like like teleporting things back to the worm aliens home planet, and like maybe the Muppet Girl is like an alien. From, like, an alien species that, like, puppets and stuffed toys were were based on. Like, they came to Earth and we made puppets to be like them. I've run out of words. <laughs> like, like, there's so much in this movie. And it's like... It's Thanks Killing Three. What are you doing? Why did you? Why did you? Why is there so much lore to Thanks Killing Three? Why is Thanks Killing Three this like batshit science fantasy movie? Ugh. So, um, Turkey has a wife and a child in this movie, and he kills his wife at the beginning of the movie, uh, but then he, like, he kinda kills his son, but only so his son's soul can possess the last copy of Thanks Killing 2, and he can use the fact that the the copy is possessed by his son to find it easier. At the end of film, he, he goes to to Turkey Hell so that he can upload the the movie to the internet. Why did he have to go to Turkey Hell for that? Why is there a Turkey Hell? There's so much fucking lore to this movie. Like, what the... F what were they thinking? <laughs> Why is this Thanks Killing 3? It's overwhelming, is is what it is. That's that's the word I would use to describe Thanks Killing 3. It is overwhelming. There's so much going on for a movie where really one thing needs to be going on. A, a turkey kills people. That should be the plot of the movie. Um, the guy in the movie who's trying to start Thanksgiving Land ha lives with his grandmother, and his grandmother is also a puppet, but she's like a rubber puppet, 
like uh, like the worm is a rubber puppet. I think the turkey the turkey is like kind of a rubber puppet. They're not the Muppet Girl. There's the Muppet Girl who's a puppet, but then there's all these other puppets that are like latex puppets, not the the felt girl. So so he lives with the, with his, his grandmother who's a puppet, and she's trying to be a rapper. That's like. Like, her, her story is that, like, she was blessed by God to be a rapper or something. Um, and she sounds like a guy doing a bad Eric Cartman impression. That's, she, she has a very Eric Cartman-esque voice. The question is, do I recommend Thanks Killing 3? Maybe. Because, like... Thanks Killing 3, if it, be prepared, be prepared for what, th know what Thanks Killing 3 is going into it, because I was not prepared. If you know what it is and you go, okay, that sounds like something I could show at like a bad movie night, then by all means, go ahead. It's, it's not, it's not like a hard sit, it's not like obnoxious. Or unfunny at all. I mean... I mean, I didn't get a lot of laughs out of it, but it's not, like, groan-worthy humor. It's not Ginger Dead Man 3, you know? <laughs> the, the turkey doesn't jerk off in this movie. He does have sex with a woman in the first one, which, uh... I question that. And then there's a joke about, uh... uh it's salad tossing, but then it's it. Like it looks like he's masturbating, but he's actually tossing a salad, which is not what salad tossing means. That's that's not a joke that really works, but whatever. My point being, if you're prepared for Thanks Killing Three, there's nothing about it that's like unwatchable, but at the same time, there's very little reason to watch Thanks Killing 3, so if you choose to skip it, I understand that decision as well. Would, would you ever believe, would you, if, if someone told you Thanks Killing 3 was trying too hard, would you believe them? Because I don't think I would have before I watched this movie. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Give me just a second. Why do I say give me just a second to the camera? As if as if my audience is gonna know that I got up and did something. <laughs> I mean now they are. Now I've said it and now I'm gonna edit it into the video, but <laughs> So my question last time was uh what's your favorite movie from holiday other than uh Christmas or Halloween? Because there's so many Christmas movies and so many Halloween movies. So I'm like, knock out the two obvious ones, any holiday except those two. And I got a few answers. Weirdly, no one said Groundhog's Day, which would be my pick because Groundhog's Day is just like the greatest movie. I think most people forget Groundhog's Day even is a holiday. If you don't want to count, if you don't want to count Groundhog's Day... Uh, my number two would probably be Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Definitely the best Thanksgiving movie. Um, better than Blood Rage, even. Bobo Strutskin. Bob, Bo Bobo Strutskin? Bobo Strutskin. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, he agrees with me. He said, favorite holiday movie, not Christmas or Halloween, would be Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Absolutely. Classic movie. Um... You know, John Candy, Steve Martin, uh, might be, might be the best Steve Martin movie. Probably also the best John Candy movie, but you know, you know how I feel about Spaceballs. <laughs> Here we are, Lino. This is, uh, gotta say I've got a love for Uncle Sam for my favorite holiday movie pick. Mainly because it's directed by William Lustig and written by Larry Cohen. Um, he also disagrees with me that The Omen 2 isn't very good. 
He he says just thinking about the remake makes him angry. I still haven't seen the remake. Um, I probably will since you know I have the Blu-ray. But yeah, not not really looking forward to watching the remake. Uh, disagree. The Omen Two kind of bland. Uh, although mm, it does have some good kills. I won't disagree with you on that. It does have some good kills. Uh, Uncle Sam I have not seen. I do know William Lustig and Larry Cohen. To I was going to say, like, great. I, l I like I like Maniac, but also Mani <laughs> Maniac's just, like, a super weird movie. Um, cannot say I feel the same about Maniac Cop or Maniac Cop 2. They're just kind of... I mean, they are what they are. <laughs> um, have not seen Uncle Sam. Um, Larry Cohen. I've seen some Larry Cohen movies. Probably some Larry Cohen movies coming down the pipeline for for Matt Presents. So look forward to me recommending those. I might even recommend Uncle Sam because I've never seen it. Um, noted. Uncle Sam, noted. Here we go. Uh, Henry Koslick, favorite holiday movie, Independence Day by a long shot. It's a, a modern classic, and you literally have the memes of it floating around even to this day. Will Smith's popularity only adds to its ability to stay relevant and watchable. Um, apparently Mulan, the original, takes place during Chinese New Year, but that's more to do with how China releases movies than anything else. And he says uh, he would have argued Bill and Ted face the music as the best satanic movie because they're in hell, I guess. Um... I still haven't watched Bill and Ted Face the Music. I did... I, I was at the uh, the store... Dang, where is it? There it is. I was at the store and I got... They had a three-pack. I, even though I already have Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure on Blu-ray, I went ahead and got the three-pack because I did not have Bogus Journey, and I'm a big fan of Bogus Journey. Still haven't watched Face the Music. Independence Day, good movie. Definitely a good movie. I guess, man, two of the three answers were 4th of July movies. What do you know? Um, yeah, Independence Day is a fun movie. I don't think I could argue that it's actually good. I kind of consider, <laughs> I consider it a, a bit of a guilty pleasure, you know? But it is, it is a fun movie. I love Independence Day. Definitely the best Roland Emmerich movie. Like, unquestionably the best Roland Emmerich movie. <laughs> Today's question, pretty obvious. What's your favorite Christmas horror movie? Because I swear to God, there are so many Christmas horror movies. Like, there are more horror movies set around Christmas than Halloween. Promise. Swear to God, there's more Christmas horror than Halloween horror. So what's your favorite Christmas horror movie? Um... Tonight's, I say tonight's triple feature, but, um, I'm actually going to be showing these next week because I have a friend coming into town today, and also I'm not doing a movie night two weeks from now because two weeks from today is Christmas. So I, I will upload the next episode of That Presents, but I will not be recommending any movies at the end of it. Because it's Christmas. So anyways, uh, tonight's Christmas triple feature recommendation, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 1 and Part 2. I've only seen the first one. From what I've heard, the second one reuses an unforgivable amount of footage from the first one. But it also has the classic scene that one of the most classic scenes in horror movie history. We'll talk about that next time, of course. And then we'll watch Christmas Evil. The Blu-ray was is supposed to show up today, but it still hasn't shown up when I'm recording this, so... There's the poster. That's what the poster looks like. Christmas Evil. Until next time, I'm Matt. Uh... Merry Christmas and Happy Thanksgiving!